All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, Wisdom of the Ages, the greatest wisdom of the ages, and that's what we're going to get into today, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, and you know what that means. Time for some Dr. Wayne W. Dyer's Wisdom of the Ages, 60 Days to Enlightenment, ladies and gentlemen. But I believe it's been far over 60 days for us on this journey. But as you can see, we're getting down, getting further towards and closer to the end of this wonderful book that has brought us so many lessons from many different authors and poets that is all about the greatest wisdom of the ages, ladies and gentlemen. And today's lesson, today's teaching, today's subject is about your highest self. And... I was excited to get into this one when I seen we would be doing it last week. I kind of look forward every time I finish and see what the next one is. And this one is one of those topics that's really important to me, I think, in this metaphysical understanding of ourselves and help us find a place of more happiness and peace and a higher quality of life. Now, the um, selection here I'm not sure if it's a poem or just a bit from a piece of literature, it comes to us from one of the leading personalities of modern India, mystic and painter Rabindranath Tagore received the Nobel Prize for Literature. His works are classics, renowned for their lyrical beauty and spiritual poignancy. And so Rabindranath Tagore lived 1861 to 1941. And this selection here from Rabindranath begins and goes like this. I came out alone on my way to my tryst. But who is this me in the dark? I move aside to avoid his presence, but I escape him not. He makes the dust rise from the earth with his swagger. He adds his loud voice to every word I utter. He is my own little self, my lord. He knows no shame, but I am ashamed to come to thy door in his company. Mm. Most powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever told yourself something about yourself? And then wondered who was the I that was speaking to the I. So if I feel disappointed in myself, who is the I talking to the myself? And this is a great learning, a great um, discovery when you can come to this understanding that there is different levels of our mind. There is the observer, and then there is the character you know some people might think of it like a video game how you can control the little avatar that runs around while you are the controller separate witnessing the avatar but let's dive right into what wayne dyer has to say about this most fascinating subject about the highest self in that other part of us that we so often fail to recognize but always exists. Wayne Dyer begins by saying, there are two people living inside each of us. Now, at first, that may sound kind of wild if you've never come across this topic before. There are two people living inside each of us. The first person I call ego. Ego wants to be right. Ego also believes that he is separate from everyone else and that he is competing with all those others. And so already going into the separation of the ego self and your higher self or highest self. Wayne Dyer continues by saying he feels, talking about ego here, that his very existence depends on being better than everyone else. Consequently, he strives to have not only more things, but more expensive things. He feels best when he is able to defeat someone else, and thus he evaluates his worth as a person on the basis of how he stacks up 
to all those others he so desperately wants to conquer. See, it's a comparison game, ladies and gentlemen, rather than being personally and inner directed, outwardly attached, is what this ego mind, this ego part of us, does so much. It becomes outwardly focused and outwardly to, attached to trying to achieve greater results in the material world <clears throat> rather than greater results inside, regardless of the material world. Now, Wayne Dyer continues by saying, if he is number one, this is his dream come true. But being in the top 10% is still pretty good. And staying in the top half is absolutely essential. Now, see, these are the kind of ways that most of us go through our lives because we're so connected to this ego part of ourselves. And it's not our fault, really. We've been trained and conditioned by society to be in this ego mindset. And so continuing with what Wayne Dyer is saying here, ego not only loves to win, he needs it desperately. And... He is always in a state of striving rather than arriving, ladies and gentlemen. We've talked about that a lot as well on this series. He wallows in his achievements, counts his awards, rewards, and badges of honor frequently. Ego can have the nicest cars, fanciest clothes, finest foods, most spectacular drugs imaginable, kinkiest sex. I can't believe Wayne Dyer put that in there. <laughs> The most spectacular drugs and the kinkiest sex. Jeez, Wayne. And all manner of pleasures. <laughs> and when they all have worn off, see, this is the ego here, and become passe, a brand new list of demands appears. So it's constantly striving. Ego is impossible to satisfy as long as there is someone out there whom he must defeat or must stuff or more stuff to buy and own so that he can be a winner. He strives, and this works for both men and women, so using the term he here is just kind of a generalization, talking about the ego itself. He strives, but he never arrives. The second person residing in each of us, I call spirit, Wayne Dyer says. And I'd like to mention before I go on there, the striving versus the arriving. If you're always striving, and that's all you know, then when you get there, you don't know how to arrive. You've never practiced it. What do I mean by arriving? Well, it's you don't know how to sit in your achievement and be in the moment and enjoy the moment. Because you've never practiced it. You're always practicing this activity of striving. To get to the moment. We'll finally be happy when I get there. But if we can make it the moment. And know that for the very first time. It's a new experience. For many of us who have never gotten there. Or have gotten there. But then didn't know what to do with it. And continue to, to strive. Wayne Dyer sometimes describes it as. You know getting to the end of high school or college or whatever, and you're expecting there to be a huge, you know, parade for you. Sure, they might do a ceremony for all the kids or whatever, but there is this sense of, man, I was striving so long, I thought this would be it. Now what? And that is the inability to sit and arrive and be in the present moment with gratitude and joy. And so... That itself is a practice, ladies and gentlemen. If we always practice striving, we will never know how to arrive when we get there. So, continuing. The second person residing inside each of us, I call spirit, Wayne Dyer says, is not interested in any of the same things that capture the fancy of ego. He could care less about acquiring anything. He is not the least bit interested in being better than anyone else. So these are some of the attributes that we want to begin to practice and attempt to come to know through practice in our own lives. He could care less about acquiring anything. He's not the least bit interested in being better than anyone else, let alone in defeating others. In fact, 
He never even compares himself to anyone, which would be the most powerful place that we could get, ladies and gentlemen. He only seems to want one thing and is single-minded when it comes to this desire. Spirit overlooks all the needs of his omnipresent twin, ego, and desires only to be at peace. Yes, spirit is the desire to be at peace. There's a great line, forget what book it comes from, but it's, I can choose peace over this. And it's one of those affirmations that we can use throughout our daily lives to help us and re to help us remind ourselves to get back to where it is we really want to be. I can choose peace over this. And so when it comes to competition, he will compete, but he never feels any need to lord it over those who also compete. When it comes to possessions, spirit truly enjoys them, but never seems to be possessed by them and is just as likely to give them away. So see, this is the thing. Some people will say, oh, okay, so when you don't want, you know, when you're no longer trying to strive for all the physical things in the world, what, do you just give up everything and live in the grass? Or, you know, and it's like, no, 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 you're missing the point. You can come from spirit and truly enjoy your possessions, but you never become possessed by your possessions. Meaning, you never become uh, overwhelmed or controlled by your possessions as being super important. And you're just as willing and likely to give them away. While the mantras of ego include more and better and spirit's mantra is always the same, peace. He radiates this peace to others and promotes this kind of tranquility at all times, even in the midst of chaos. Here they are then. Our two constant inner companions, ego and spirit. The question is not how to slay one in favor for the other, but how to subdue the part that keeps us in perpetual state of turmoil and never allows any peace. How can we move from striving to arriving, you might ask, ladies and gentlemen? Well, Wayne says he asks himself this question many times in the course of a day. Who am I allowing to run things here? Is it the ego or is it spirit? In fact, I wrote an entire book on the subject, Wayne says, maybe to help myself understand the power I had given to my ego in my own life. I called it your sacred self. And if you haven't read your sacred self, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Go get yourself a copy. because. From what I've heard, it's a fantastic book. And if you have just finished reading Sacred Self, <laughs> leave a comment and let me know what you thought about it. Uh, Wayne Dyer says, and it is devoted to the theme of Tagore's famous dialogue with Krishna, God, at the beginning of this essay. How can we tame that part of ourselves that feels separate from everyone else and needs to conquer and win and acquire in order to feel good, ladies and gentlemen. I've borrowed thoughts from famous poets like Tagore and Rumi, who are essential contributors not only to this book, but to my daily life. And that's why I'm reading this, ladies and gentlemen, because all of these wonderful authors and poets of the wisdom of the ages are essential contributors through their wisdom and through what I've learned to my daily life. And so... How can we tame that part of ourself? Wayne Dyer says, um, created, he created the following prayer that he says each morning on his way to begin the day. He says, dear God, my ego is demanding, pushy, obsessed with being right, and is always in search of more. It never seems to be satisfied. My sacred self is inclined to be peaceful, non-competitive, non-judgmental, and it never makes demands. Please send messages from one to the other. Fascinating. 
So you're not asking to destroy the ego. I think so often we're convinced that we have to destroy the ego and that the ego is bad. And I think the great statement is that the ego makes an excellent servant, but a terrible master. So we need to begin to make the ego a servant of our highest self. Tagore, in his dialogue with God, is doing much the same thing. He wonders, who is this me in the dark, quote unquote, that he cannot seem to escape? Who is this who swaggers through life with this self-importance of infecting every word? Who is shameless? But also he recognized that the entrance way to the highest realm is blocked by this shameless little self. This poet was given the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913 for one of his greatest collections of poetry, yet felt no kinship with such an honor. He lived his life writing about how to rid oneself of identification with such prizes. Reading Tagore's sensitive poems in this particular piece offer each of us a valuable reminder of the benefits of subduing the ego and listening to the spirit who beckons us to peace, ladies and gentlemen. The dust rising from the earth is the turmoil that will clog your life if you ignore spirit and fail to see ego's responsibility for the dust. Tagore personified quiet dignity and peaceful countenance in his life which is reflected in his beautifully simple poetry. So here are some suggestions that Wayne Dyer gives to us for applying the wisdom of Tagore's poetry into our daily life. And if you're getting value, consider subscribing, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to your heart, this is number one, before you react to anyone. See if you can tame your ego once today. Just once, I'm adding this. If you begin to practice, you get better at what you practice, ladies and gentlemen. So if we can tame our ego, this was a 10K, by the way. That was the first time I ever did a 10K. But if we can tame our ego, <laughs> see how that works? It, it begins to be something we can do more often because we practiced in the beginning. So... Before speaking, ask yourself, is, is what I'm about to say for the purpose of making someone else wrong or, and proving myself special? Will I create more turmoil or more serenity, ladies and gentlemen? I can choose peace instead of this, remember. And so then make the decision to be kind and loving. Notice how your ego reacts and allow it to take a less dominant role once or twice a day until it becomes a habit, a new way of being. And so we can create these habits through practice, these habits of positivity and greatness from this wisdom through practice, ladies and gentlemen. So number two, be aware of how frequently you use I in conversation and see if you can let your sentences begin with you a few times each day. So pass up the need to brag and boast in favor of applauding the accomplishments of others. Very fascinating. And so number three here, work at being less attached to the things that you've accumulated and begin a practice of letting go. Now, this doesn't mean you throw away and get rid of all your possessions. This means you begin the practice of being less attached so that you can let go to that attachment so you're no longer possessed by your possessions. Giving more of yourself to others by giving some of your stuff away is a helpful way to tame the attachment to acquisitions and retrain our ego, retrain ourselves, and allow the peace that spirit desires. Number four, converse with your ego 
in much the same way I do in my daily prayer. Speak from your highest self. Here's an example of a letter to her ego, to her ego, that Shirley Ross Corber wrote to me after reading your sacred self. So interesting that this verse here references your sacred self a couple of times. That might be the perfect book to discover and understand that part of yourself that is separate from our ego self. Maybe not separate, but is, you know, side by side and equally available. This is what uh, Shirley Ross Corber said to Dr. Wayne Dyer after reading your sacred self. She said, journaling is a daily routine for me and has been for 13 years. This morning, I wrote a letter in my journal to my ego. It is as follows, quote, Dear ego, you are hereby given notice that we have a new leader. You are welcome to stay on as a silent partner. I, my sacred self, am taking over my life and my business. I have brought in the number one consultant in the universe, God. God and I will confer on the restructuring of my life and my business, and you will no longer have a voice in any of my decisions. I have no bad feelings towards you, but it is not in my best interests or those of my business to allow you to influence my daily decisions. Boom. And that's the end of that one, ladies and gentlemen. It ends kind of abruptly there, but it's telling the ego that you are no longer in control. And it's doing this process for yourself in your own mind, ladies and gentlemen. That's what makes a lot of this difficult, is these are mind thought processes that we have to create and practice for ourselves for this to begin to be something that we can do in our lives. But we all can do this, what was described here, which is coming from a higher self perspective in life and beginning to step away from the control of the ego self. And so I hope you got value out of that, ladies and gentlemen. That's a powerful little quick one. I, th I think it's an important subject that deserves a lot more time spent on. And so maybe one day we'll go into your sacred self. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, talks about privacy. Interesting. I never can um, guess what Wayne is going to extrapolate when he comes to these certain titles, like the one after that is self-image. It's fascinating as well. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate everybody who takes time out of their life to spend with me here with Dr. Wayne Dyer and all the wonderful authors and poets and the wisdom of the ages. And I hope we can begin living from our highest self, from our higher self, and connecting to that spirit part of us that only wants peace. Wayne Dyer once said the meaning of enlightenment from his guru, his teacher, was being immersed in and surrounded by peace at all times. When you are not peaceful, you are not enlightened. And so I always thought that was interesting because there's many different meanings of enlightenment. And I want to say a very big thank you to A1, who goes out of their way to leave comments on most of my videos and spends time here and shows up and shows me that they're showing up and I'm showing up. And so I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'll leave my email in the description box below the video at the bottom. And if you'd like one of my landscape paintings, A1, you've earned it. I'll send you one, just uh, send me an email and we can work out contact information or shipping destination. And I'm very willing to pay the shipping and send you something in support of your supporting me because that really means a lot to me, ladies and gentlemen, and a lot to me, A1. So thank you very much. And I do mean that. So, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, remember to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment and seek to discover the hidden wisdom of the ages and the wisdom of reality and begin to make happiness the way.
Because if we can make happiness the way, then the destination that we've always been striving to get to, you know, I'll be happy when I get there, that becomes irrelevant. Because then, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. We are already happy where we are. And then the entire journey is wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, subscribe and leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Say yes if you got value. And I'll be back next week with some more Tuesday Dow and Wednesday Wisdom. Greatest wisdom of the ages and living the wisdom of the Dow to bring your way. Stay good, ladies and gentlemen. I love you all. Nin, nin, nin.